Normally, during the school year, we have social studies as a part of shared reading, but for now, we're going to have social studies time. Be sure you watch the videos linked in Google Classroom before reading along with me. Let's get started. We're going to be re reading about ancient Indians. And now imagine that you're there with them. The time is more than 10,000 years ago and you and your family are busy settling into a new campsite. For many days, your group has been tracking a herd of mammoths and the adults are hopeful that the hunting will be good here. In the meantime, you work as fast as you can, gathering wild plants to help feed your group. The air is bitterly cold, but you keep warm by gathering the plants quickly. By tomorrow, your group will join together in the first hunt, and you hope that it will be a great success. So here are some ancient Indians, and we're pretending that we're part of this group. And here they are walking. The Land Bridge Story. The history of the United States begins with the first people in North America many thousands of years ago. They are the ancestors or early family members of present day American Indians. How did these first people come to live in North America and South America? So if you look at this map, people think that people came from Asia across a bridge made of land that is not there anymore, it's underwater, and that's how they came into North America, California's right here, and all the way down to South America. After many years of study, scientists are still not sure of the answer. However, they do have several possible explanations or theories. A theory is an idea based on study and research. One theory is that there was once a bridge of dry land between the continents of Asia and North America. Scientists call this land bridge Beringia. It was named for the Bering Strait, the narrow body of water that now separates Russia from Alaska. Scientists who study Earth's past have found proof that thousands of years ago there were several ice ages or long periods of freezing cold. During the ice ages, huge, slow-moving sheets of ice called glaciers covered large parts of Earth. Scientists think that so much of Earth's water was trapped in glaciers that the level of the oceans fell by as much as three hundred fifty feet. Because of this, the Earth had more dry land, including Beringia, than it does now. Many scientists believe that thousands of years ago, groups of hunters and their families walked from Asia across the land bridge to North America. This migration or movement of people probably took place very slowly. Groups, have, groups may have moved only a few miles in an entire lifetime. At that rate, they would have taken hundreds of years to just reach Alaska. So do you think these people walked over from Asia all the way to America? Now not everyone believes the same thing. There are other theories. Let's read about those. Other arrival theories. 
For many years, scientists thought that people arrived in the Americas about 12,000 years ago. Recently, however, archaeologists have found objects that may be more than 12,000 years old. Archaeologists are scientists who study the remaining traces of early people. At Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania, some archaeologists have found stone tools that may have been made 14,000 years ago. Objects recently uncovered at Monteverde in Chile may be 13,000 years old. These artifacts or objects made by people included, include huts, digging sticks, and even a child's footprint. Some scientists disagree about the dates of certain artifacts, but most now think that people probably arrived in the Americas before 12,000 years ago. If so, those people may have crossed Beringia during another earlier ice age. Other discoveries hint that people may have come to the Americas in a different way. They may have traveled by boat. On San Miguel Island, about 25 miles off the coast of California, archaeologists have found artifacts that may date back 10,000 years. Archaeologists know that the people who made the artifacts used boats because they lived on an island and ate deep water fish caught far from shore. To catch these fish, they made hooks out of seashells. So here's where San Miguel Island is off the coast of California. This is LA over here. Do you think people walked to America or they took boats? Origin stories. Ideas about the arrival of the first Americans also come from their descendants. In ancient times, most people passed on their history by memorizing stories. They told these legends or stories handed down from the past to their children and their grandchildren. As a result, generations of American Indians have learned these stories. A generation is the average time between the birth of parents and the birth of their children. American Indian groups have all used legends to tell about their past. The stories that tell about their origins or beginnings are called origin stories. Some American Indian origin stories explain how the world was made. For example, the Blackfoot tell a story of Old Man the Creator. According to the story, he made the animals and the plants and formed plains and mountains. The Huron tell an origin story that begins with water covering earth. According to the story, land was formed from a tiny bit of soil taken from the claws of a turtle. The turtle had picked up the soil from the bottom of the ocean. Because of this story and others like it, some American Indians use the name Turtle Island to describe the Americas. No one knows exactly when the first Americans arrived. However, many American Indians believe that their people have always lived in the Americas. So here is a grandpa. He's a storyteller and he's telling his grandchild about their origin stories about the past. Now how did the people live? Let's find out. Early ways of life. No matter how the first people got to the Americas, they were most likely nomads or people with no permanent home. 
They lived in caves or in tents made of animal skins. They kept moving, following herds of animals that they could hunt. Archaeologists know this because they have found spear points near the bodies of ancient animals. After the last ice age ended, the climate of North America was cool and damp. The plants that grew then provided food for very large animals such as giant mastodons and woolly mammoths. These animals looked like huge, hairy elephants. They stood up to 14 feet tall, weighed as much as 10,000 pounds, and often had tusks up to 14 feet long. The ancient Indians who hunted these giant animals ate the meat and used the fur, skins, and bones to make clothing, shelters, and tools. They also gathered wild foods such as mushrooms. That is why scientists refer to these people as hunters and gatherers. Compared to the huge animals they hunted, the ancient Indians were small and weak. They had to learn to work in groups to kill the animals. In time, they learned to sharpen stones into points and tie them to sturdy wooden sticks. Various groups of ancient Indians invented different tools to help them hunt. Some made clubs and axes with stone blades. Later, other people invented a new kind of tool called the atlata, which allowed hunters to throw their spears faster and farther. So here's a group of Indians hunting. Why do you think they needed to hunt these animals? In order to survive, the ancient Indians had to improve their tools. About the time the atlata was invented, the ancient Indians came up with a new kind of spear point. Using a bone or a stone, they knocked off flakes or small thin chips from flint or other kinds of stone. They flaked the stone until the point was razor sharp. Then they hollowed out the point and fastened it tightly to a wooden spear. The spears were much better hunting weapons than earlier ones. These deadly spear points are called Clovis points. They are named after the town of Clovis, New Mexico, where archaeologists first found them. Slowly, the climate of North America changed, becoming warmer and drier. Most of the plants that the giant animals ate could no longer grow, which may be one reason these animals became extinct or died out. About 10,000 years ago, most of them disappeared. People had to find new sources of food, so they began to fish and to hunt smaller animals such as deer and rabbits. The ancient Indians made new hunting tools, including the bow and arrow. They also began to eat a greater variety of plants. So here are some of the giant animals that they um, used to hunt. So now because the large animals died out, they had to figure out a new way of life. A new way of life. When the ancient Indians gathered more food than they could use right away, they found ways to store it. They used reeds, vines, and strips of wood to make baskets. Later, people learned to make storage containers out of other materials such as clay. Over time, some ancient Indians changed their life ways or ways of life even more. 
they began to plant seeds and to grow food instead of only gathering it. This change was the beginning of agriculture or farming in the Americas. Agriculture started at different times in different parts of the world. In the Americas, ancient Indians likely started farming about 5,000 years ago. Some of the earliest farmers lived in the Tehuacan Valley in central Mexico. In the fertile valley, they grew at least 12 kinds of maize, or corn, as well as avocados, squash, and beans. Maize was the most important crop for many people living in North America. It was grown all across the continent. One way that farming changed the lives of many of the ancient Indian groups was by giving them a reason to stay in one place for longer periods of time. By about 5,000 years ago, some were building stronger homes and had started villages. Some groups also formed what are now called tribes. A tribe is a group of people who share the same language, land, and leaders. So here's an, a picture of some early people working together to farm. Why do you think the Indian groups decided to start farming instead of continuing to be hunters and gatherers? In this picture, it shows that many archaeologists believe that this sole of a shoe and these cave paintings in Brazil are proof that people arrived in the Americas earlier than previously thought. The climate and natural resources of each area in which they settled affected how the groups lived. Over time, each group came to have its own culture. A culture is a way of life that sets a group apart from other groups. These unique cultures can sometimes be pieced together by scientists who study artifacts for clues about earlier life ways. So in summary, there are many theories about how people got to the Americas. Climate changes forced early people to learn how to live in new environments. Once people began to farm, they also settled in villages. These early people developed different cultures based partly on where they lived. So how do we adapt to new situations? For example, right now, we're learning from home. How have things changed because of that?